Commonwealth Savings Bank of Australia, the bank for all the family, takes pleasure in presenting the show for all the family, Life with Dexter. Or just a rainy day Be sure to save the friendly Commonwealth way So listen to this advice and start right today To bank Commonwealth Save Commonwealth Bank Commonwealth Now I must tell you about an incident that happened during Dexter's last annual holidays The Duttons didn't go away anywhere for those holidays Dexter decided to stay home and have a quiet, restful couple of weeks. And it looked like he was going to have a quiet, restful couple of weeks. Until the second evening at the dinner table, when Ashley asked a very silly question. Dad, do you reckon pretty soon I can get myself a jalopy? A what? A jalopy, a hot rod, an old second-hand vintage car. You could not. Ashley, we already have one of those in the garage. I, I beg your pardon? Jesse, are you referring to Hector as a jalopy? Well, I'm sorry, dear, but yes, I am. Hector must have been built about the same time they invented the wheel. Well. Daddy, you must admit our car is behind the times. Dad, why couldn't you hand Hector over to me and get yourself a massive new car? Huh? You just be quiet. You're not even old enough to drive. Jesse, you know very well I'm perfectly happy with Hector and I'm never likely to part with him. They don't make cars like Hector today. And they don't make paddle steamers either. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy, we're all really very fond of Hector. But don't you think yourself he's had his day? He's reaching old age. Old age, my foot. He's as young and spry and fit as I am. <coughs> <coughs> when Hector's had a good wash and polish, he looks as pretty as a picture. And as old as Rembrandt. Yeah, nothing of the kind. Now, tell me honestly, what's the difference between my car and Fred Milligan's new one? Oh, as a rough guess, I'd say about 40 years. <laughs> uh, Dad, no, why not give it to the man? when I you... give you a car, it's going to be a brand new, sleek, imported sports job. Oh, gee, Dad, are you serious? Why, oh, you've never had the money to afford it. Exactly. <laughs> look, look, family, for some reason, there's some reason for you all bringing up this subject tonight. And I'm not as silly as I look, you know. I mean, I don't look as silly as I am. I, I mean, you know very well what I mean. Very but... well, dear. I'll admit it. We did bring up the subject on purpose. And if uh... you want reasons, well, here they are. Or for one thing, I've had a driver's license for two years now, but I'm still afraid to drive Hector. Oh. I I'd like us to have a small, light car like most of our neighbours. A car I could handle to do the shopping and, and drive to mothers and, and things like that. And why can't you take Hector shopping and to your mother's? Why not? Because I'd rather drive a tractor or try to park a steamroller. Dexter, just sit quietly and listen to me for a moment. Now, Ashley and I strolled round Mr. Evans' used car yards today and we saw some very good small cars in excellent condition for three or four hundred pounds. This conversation is getting so out of hand it's ridiculous. Now, Jesse, the answer is no. And when I say no, I mean no. <laughs> Mr. Evans, how much is this one? Ah, now, that's a little beauty, Mr. Dutton, and very keenly priced, too. How much? Five hundred. Oh, well, it might be keenly priced, but I'm not keen on the price. <laughs> how much is the little red one over there? Ah, that's a tip-top vehicle, and I'm sacrificing it, really sacrificing it at four sixty-five. Is uh, that getting more towards your price bracket? It's getting towards it, but it's got a long way to go. <laughs> Look, Mr. Evans, would you mind if my boy and I just sort of wander about the yards for a while? If we see something we're interested in, we'll, we'll call you. Fine, fine. Take your time and have a good look at everything. You'll find the prizes flying from the windows, I hope. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Dad, we're not likely to make a decision without Mum and Janie, are we? I mean, well, they don't even know we're here. Of course they don't. That's the idea. Women know nothing about values like us men. Your mother would select a car because of the colour or because the number plate was her lucky number. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, hey, here's a nice little bus. What do you think? The prize. What's the prize? Uh, 75 pounds. 75? Oh, my word, that, that is a nice little bus. Oh, oh, I like that very much. 
Oh, 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 wait a minute. It's 75 deposits. <laughs> Full price, 330 That's a horrible-looking thing. I <laughs> uh, wouldn't have that as a gift, Ashley. Let's keep walking. If you see anything over 200 just just ignore it. Uh-huh. Hey, Dad, what's this over here? Say, this is interesting. Look. Full price, 60 pounds. 60? There, there must be some mistake. What is it? Uh, it's a uh, goiter. Never heard of a goiter before. Well, neither have I. It must be a foreign car of some kind. Uh, Mr. Evans? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dutton. Come in, come in. Ah, don't tell me you cunning gents have your eyes on that beautiful little goiter. Well, it, it is interesting if that's the price. Sixty pounds? That's the price. But only because it's an unknown maker car in this country. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful piece of craftsmanship. And its real worth is more like 300 pounds. Oh, 60 pounds? There must be more of a catch to it than just being an unknown brand. No catch to it at all. Mr. Dutton, I could get at least 250 for that vehicle if I had the time to do one small thing. Ah, oh, what's that? Get it running. Get... <laughs> Get it running. You mean it doesn't go? Not at the moment, but it only needs someone to tinker with it for an hour or two. Oh, right. That's all. There's only some minor little fault with it, and uh, it could be just a block petrol line. Unfortunately, I have a principle in my business which I can't break. I don't do mechanical repairs. I only sell the car as it comes to me. Yeah, but how did this one come when it doesn't go? <laughs> this goiter was towed here. And the owner accepted 50 pounds trade-in. I'm offering it at 60 to any amateur mechanic who could have it running perfect in no time. Uh, Dad, look, I don't think you'd better... Just leave this to me, son. Uh, Mr. Evans, uh, would it be all right for me to sort of tinker with it here and see if I could get it going? I'm afraid not, Mr. Dutton, but uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Seeing it's you, a smart man with mechanical knowledge, I'll let you have it for 50 instead of 60. Give me a check now and I'll have it delivered to your home by tow truck this afternoon. It's a very tempting offer. Dad, you'd better see Mum before Ashley, you... Ashley, just let me think. I believe it's uh, <clears throat> only fair to mention that uh, someone else is very interested in the vehicle, and uh, I'm sort of half expecting him back today. I I've made up my mind. I I'll take it. Even if my wife doesn't like it, I can still fix it and resell it. Why, surely. And if you do, you'll make a handsome profit. Now, uh, if you care to come to my office, we'll settle the deal. Good. Ashley, who told you to raise the bonnet? What are you doing? Oh, it's okay, Dad. She has got an engine. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and fill in the necessary papers. Uh, just come in when you're ready. Yeah, right on, Mr. Evans. Uh, listen, son, uh, when your mother sees this car, what do you think her first words will be? Mum's first words will be, where am I after we picked her up? <laughs> Whether Ashley has the right idea about Jessie's reaction when she sees the car is something we'll soon learn. In the meantime, let us consider whether you have the right idea about the word thrift. Now, some people think the word thrift means being mean or miserly. And yet, if you look it up in the dictionary, you'll find that, amongst other things, it means prosperity and success. And don't get me wrong, that is not a definition of thrift I cooked up myself. Oh, no. It is the definition given in the dictionary. And once you realize that thrift means prosperity and success, you'll get the right idea about saving. So why not open a Commonwealth Savings Bank account tomorrow and start saving for your prosperity and success? A Commonwealth Savings Bank account takes only a minute or so to open. You'll find the staff at any office of the Commonwealth Savings Bank. They're cheerful, friendly people who will be only too happy to help and advise you. So get the right idea. Open a Commonwealth Savings Bank account, and week by week, Bank Commonwealth. Now, now, girls, close your eyes, and when I say right, you'll see a wonderful surprise on our back lawn. Now, now close them. Oh, this is so silly. I want to know what all the noise was about. Just keep your eyes closed, Mum, and you too, Compost. Well, I've never heard so much rumpus in my life. All the rumpus is gone now. Okay, girl, open your eyes and behold. Oh, I can't imagine what... What? What's that? <laughs> what is it? What 
is it? What, 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 what does it look like? It looks like Hector's had a pup. It... <laughs> It's a genuine imported goiter. A goiter? Not a goiter. <laughs> Not a goiter, a goiter. Oh, Jesse, isn't it a little beauty? Look, I bought it for a song. And one of your songs is about what it's worth. <laughs> oh, Dexter, you didn't pay out good money for that. Jesse, it is a very rare continental goiter. It's worth at least 300 pounds, but your sharp husband got it for 50. Oh, no. <laughs> What's wrong, Mum? Do you think Dad paid too much for it? Yes, about 50 pounds too much. Oh, Dexter, I hate to hurt your feelings, but I wouldn't be seen dead in a contraption like that. You can just get in it and drive it straight back to Mr. Evans. Uh, 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 well, I... Uh, you see, I... Uh, he can't do that, Mum. He can do that, and right now. Do you want a bet? <laughs> Why can't Daddy drive it back to Mr. Evans? <clears throat> Tell him, Pop. It, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't go. <laughs> it doesn't go? But it will as soon as I get to work on it. Jesse, I got it for 50 pounds instead of 300 because it needs a couple of minor repairs. I'll have it going before tonight. Oh, I don't believe it. Dexter, I don't care what you do with it, but don't present it to me and don't let the neighbours see it. Oh, th th this is lovely. Last night, everyone was trying to talk me into buying another car. A car, yes, but not one of Hector's foreign relatives. <laughs> Very well, Jesse. All, all right, in a few days' time, I'll present you with 300 pounds, and then you can buy whatever car you want. When you realize you've got 300 pounds and yet all I actually spent was 50, you'll understand what kind of a businessman you married. Daddy, do you honestly believe anyone's going to pay 300 for this? When it's running smoothly, yes. I know Evans will probably take it back for 250, even if I decide not to bother selling it privately. I'll believe that when I see it. If you'll excuse Janie and me, we're not feeling very well. <laughs> Well, what do you think of that? Can, can you beat women? Well, they sure are crazy cats. <laughs> Mind you, Dad, I did say at the time... All, all right. I can still get this contraption running and make a handsome profit. I'll have it purring in no time. Well, I hope so, but I wouldn't count your bridges before they hatch. I think they have... What's that? <laughs> Hi, Mr. Wilmot. It's our new car. New car? I thought your father had been putting reducing tablets in Hector's radiator. <laughs> <laughs> very, very funny. You'll stop laughing when you know what I paid for this imported special. I picked it up for 50. Did you? Well, 50 bob sounds reasonable. <laughs> 50 pounds! Oh, Dexter. Does it go? I wish you'd go. <laughs> Dad's going to get it going himself and then sell it for 300. Three? You ought to ask for 600. Six? Maybe seven. Set? Do you think I'd get it? No. <laughs> well, you might as well go for seven as three. You've got no chance of getting either. I'll just pretend you're not here. Ashley, lift up the bonnet and I'll find the trouble in a few seconds. Take care, Ashley. The lot might fall to pieces. As far as I'm concerned, you're somewhere else. You're jealous because I have a mechanical head. Is that what's in there instead of a brain? <laughs> look, it, move. Give me some light, son, so I can have a look at this. Uh-huh. Hmm. Oh, well, no wonder the car won't start. My dear gentlemen, all I have to do is go back to Evans tomorrow morning and buy one small item, and I'll be the owner of a 300 pounds foreign car. Oh, what's missing, Dad? A battery. It has no battery. Oh, boy, that's simple to replace. Ashley, if you'd like my opinion, this car will never run because of another simple mechanical defect. What's that, Mr. Wilmot? There's a screw loose <laughs> in your father's head. <laughs> Well, Mr. Evans, the way I see it is this, you see. Somebody stole the battery out of the car while the previous owner had it. He probably didn't even look under the bonnet, but had it towed here to your yard and traded it in. Why, of course. When all he had to do was invest in a new battery. Exactly. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, to think I could have made £250 profit instead of you. Oh, it hurts, you know. 
Ah, well, I guess that's the way the ball bounces. A anyway, how much will I be up for for a cheap second-hand battery? Why, Mr. Dutton, you're a wise enough man to know there's no such thing as a cheap second-hand battery. I wouldn't handle them, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to buy one. You uh, wouldn't know how much service you'd get from it. Uh, a day? A week, perhaps? Yeah, but I I'm not keeping the car. I I'm selling it. Certainly you are at a fantastic profit. But you wouldn't want your buyer to be stranded with a dud battery. Just the same as I wouldn't sell you a dud car. Well, I... Uh, I, I guess I wouldn't, no. Uh, well, how much for a good one? As a matter of fact, it just so happens I've got a good reconditioned 12 volter. Yeah. Let me see. A special price because it's you. Ten pounds even. Ten pa Oh. Well, I, I, I don't know. Mr. Dutton, you surprise me. A shrewd businessman who can smell a bargain a mile off and who stands to make hundreds on the deal thinking twice about investing another ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll take it. Here's the ten pounds. Thank you. And I'll get the battery. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, while you're here, you might as well fix them up for the other. It'll save me sending you an account. Account? It'll fix you up for what other? Oh, I'll tell you a farmer for yesterday. The cost of the tow truck. The tow... Oh. Shall I push my foot on the star now, Dad? Wait a minute, not yet. I want to make sure the battery leads are on tight. Dexter, you seem awfully sure the car's going to start. Well, sure, I'm sure. A car won't start without a battery now, will it? Well, that's not to say this one will start with one. Daddy, I've got my fingers crossed. Better cross your arms and legs, too. Hi, Duttons. May I come and watch the launch? Oh, good morning, Kimberly. Of course, you're welcome. Haven't you anything better to do than sticky beak? Not if you've nothing better to do than play with tin cans. <laughs> You'll soon see the difference between a tin can and a luxury continental car. When this quality motor ticks over, it'll be so quiet you'll hardly notice it. Ready now, Dad? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. All right, push down your foot on the starter. Well, go on, push it down. I am pushing it down. If I push any harder, my foot will go through the floorboards. Am I glad I came in? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. There, there, there must be some little wire disconnected. Now, let's see. This cable goes from the battery to the chassis. That's in order. Now, this one goes from the battery to the starter motor. The start... Where is it? There's no starter motor! <laughs> Mr. Dutton, you don't say. No starter motor? Well, I had no idea. You didn't? Oh, I mean, no, no, of course you didn't. But, well, uh, you see, there it is. Uh, the, the point is, can you supply a starter motor for a goiter? Mm, that's a big order. Uh, especially seeing there's only one goiter in the country. Uh, wait on now, we mustn't be too hasty. I just remembered something. A French Le Ruibon starter motor would fit your car perfect. French Le Ruibon? Where would I get one of those? Well, uh, as a matter of fact... It just so happens I have one in my office. <laughs> it was, uh, it was left with me by a man who owes me 30 pounds. 30 pa You mean it's worth that? Actually, no, but, uh, it's worth that to me because apparently the man isn't returning for it and, uh, he's left it to cover the debt. Oh, yeah, well, I, I believe I'll search round a bit for something cheaper. You're wasting your time, Mr. Dutton. It's the only time to fit your car. And after all... With a car running perfect, as it will with this starter motor, you will stand to make a handsome profit. Well, that's true, Dad. You've gone this far, you might as well go the rest. Yeah, well, I, uh... Thirty pounds, you said. Well, really, it should be thirty-five, because, uh, I've done some rewiring and, uh, painted it up, but, uh, we'll settle for the even thirty. Here, here's the starter on my desk. On... on your desk? Uh, one would almost think you'd been expecting me. <laughs> How quaint you are, Mr. Dutton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, Dexter, so you've got a new battery and another starter motor. Let's see the engine go now. It'll go, have no fears. Push your foot down, Ashley. Right, Dad. Well, harder. No soap, Dad. Oh, I can't understand it. I just can't understand it. Dexter, maybe the engine is turning over, but it's so quiet and continental, we can't hear a sound. (laughs) (laughs) Why don't you go and take your funny remarks somewhere else? Yes, stand aside and let a good mechanic look inside the bonnet. Oh, oh, what would you know about it? Uh, I know this much. The distributor's missing and so is the carburetor. That's what I said, Mr. Evans. No distributor and no carburetor. And don't forget the generator, Dad. No generator. No generator. Well, well, well. That is unfortunate. Yeah, most unfortunate. No battery, starter motor, distributor, carburetor and generator. I'm beginning to see now why that car didn't want to go. (laughs) Yes, uh, they're only minor little things, but it's amazing they do make a difference. It staggers me, Mr. Dutton. It really staggers me. Yeah, well, the point is, what can I do about the distributor, carburetor, and generator? As a matter of fact... It just just so happens! It looks to me as if Evans has the answer to all Dexter's car problems. And it just so happens that the Commonwealth Savings Bank has all the answers to your saving problems. No matter where you go in Australia, you'll find a friendly office of the Commonwealth Savings Bank. Many of these offices are branches of the bank. Many of them agencies conducted at post offices. Many, again, are agencies carried on in shops and stores. But wherever you see the Commonwealth Savings Bank sign you can be sure of getting friendly and confidential savings bank service. There are over 7,000 Commonwealth Savings Bank offices in Australia. In fact, wherever there are people, there's an office of the bank nearby. At any of these offices, you can open an account, make a deposit, or arrange to withdraw money. And everything is transacted in complete privacy. From this, you can see, it does make a difference where you save. You can also see why over five million people bank Commonwealth. All right, Ashley, when I say right, push your foot on the starter, and if it doesn't go this time, I'll put a bomb under it. It'll be the first time a bomb's ever been put under a bomb. (laughs) Oh, why don't you be quiet? Okay, son, right. Something's making a noise. But it isn't the engine running. I'll bet the pistons are rusted to the cylinders. Oh, oh, it's going! The engine's going! Oh, so Don't let it stop! No, 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 Keep your foot on the accelerator. Oh, listen to that, everybody. Running like a bird. Yeah, like a sick ostrich. Take it, dear. You'll only be eight pounds out. Oh, Jesse, I, I'm going to start at 250, and I might have to come down to about 200, but no less. Well, stand clear, everybody. Here I go. Ashley, how long would you say your father's been gone? Oh, gee, not more than ten minutes. Why? He's got such a fantastic idea, it frightens me. Uh, Jesse, may I use your telephone? Yes, of course. What's the idea? Look, at this moment, Dexter will be just about arriving at Evans' car yard. I'm going to phone Evans and make a bid. A bid? Just listen, you'll get the idea. What's Evans' phone number? Oh, it's written there on the pad, Mr. Wilmot. Here it is. Oh, thanks, Janie. Dexter's going to get his price from this crook. Hmm? Huh? Well, I'm not worthy. Shh, quiet. Hello? Am I speaking to Mr. Evans? Oh, Mr. Evans, my name is Henry Gladstone. I'm president of the Vintage Car Club. For years I've been looking for a genuine continental goider, and someone told me you might be able to help me. You did have one, but you sold it. Oh. Oh, Would you mind sending me to whom? 
You see, for a goider in running order, I'd be willing to pay up to 400. What's that? You'll call me back. My number? Oh, yes, Ashfield 6909. Thank you, Mr. Evans. I hope you can help me. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. Wilbot, you're a genius. A super genius. But, Kimberly, do you think it's honest? About as honest as Evans is, yeah. <laughs> now, that's only going to ask for 250 now, and Evans will pay it like a flash. Tell me, Kimberly, whose phone number is Ashfield 6979? I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> How'd you go? You look awfully pleased with yourself, dear. Oh, so I should be, Jesse. Am I a smart businessman or am I a smart businessman? Please, Daddy, tell us what happened. All right, now, don't rush me, everyone. Give me time. I'll bet you asked for 250 and Evans paid us. He nearly paid it, except that he didn't count on me overhearing him have a little phone conversation. A phone conversation? Yes, and I heard every word being spoken from both ends. Why should I accept 250 from Evans when I can get 400 from the president of the Vintage Car Club? There's no doubt about it. Strange things go on week by week in the Dutton and Wilmot households. And no doubt too many young couples listening to life with Dexter... Must wonder if marriage is really like that. So let me hasten to reassure them that marriage is what you make it yourselves. And as this is the season for June brides, I'd like to say a few words to all young couples. As I just said, marriage is what you make it yourselves. And believe me, there's no firmer foundation on which to make a happy marriage than on a Commonwealth Savings Bank account. If you can start your married life with money in the bank, you are off to a wonderful start. Your Commonwealth Savings Bank account can give you peace of mind and a feeling of security. It can provide the money to make your first home so much more attractive. So for your own sakes, realize now that regular saving in the Commonwealth Savings Bank is the first step towards a successful marriage. And don't wait until you become engaged to start saving. Begin now. Open a Commonwealth Savings Bank account and week by week, Bank Commonwealth. If money can buy it, saving will get it. So bank Commonwealth now. For a car or a bike or just a rainy day, be sure to save the friendly Commonwealth way. So listen to this advice and start right today to bank Commonwealth say Commonwealth Bank. Life with Dex is produced by Noel Judd and written by Willie Funnell. And this is John Dunn inviting you to enjoy Life with Dex at the same time next week from this station. And remember, you'll always enjoy life with a Commonwealth Savings Bank account. <laughs> <laughs>